we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. It's an urban jungle out there, so this episode is all about showing you the best videos to help guide you through life in the hustle and bustle of the city. Personally, I'd love to have a jetpack to get around. Forget the risks, I don't care. Having a jetpack to get exactly where you want would just be amazing. We'll give you all the hacks you need to navigate the life of the switched on urbanite. From a nifty way to beat the commuter crowd to the urban athlete, to an awesome graffiti hack for urban artists. And in our epic hack, Mike will be putting the biggest issue for all you urbanites out there to the test home security. That's molten iron that's pouring out down there. Ever thought running was a faster option than using public transport? If so, these guys, who are literally racing an underground train from station to station, will be your heroes. I guarantee they couldn't do this during rush hour, though. It would take about five minutes just to get off the train in the first place. There are a lot of different physiological factors for why some people run faster than others, but ultimately it's down to your height, the length of your stride, and how quickly you do those strides. I'd give it a go. I imagine I'd get to the bottom of the escalator and start having a terrible pain in my upper arm and <laughs> clutching the person next to me. But if you're not George, then this speedy subway stunt is the perfect way to keep fit and beat the crowds. A heart racing hack hit! Parking is a huge cause of stress for any city dweller, so this next tip will definitely come in handy for all you urbanites out there. If you're getting into a tight parking spot, you can use a reflection on the mirror, on the window, to see how much space you have before hitting the car behind you. Of course, this is a hack not only for people who can't park, but who have also never heard of parking sensors. I'd love to see him do this in a space that actually has two cars either side of it. Let's face it, if you need to rely on a huge shop window to stop you from crashing into other cars, you probably shouldn't be on the road in the first place. A mirrored miss. Pollution, crowds and relentless traffic can all help make life in the city a misery. Well, this next hack will help you leave all that behind in the form of a beautiful jet-powered wake. I've got one of those and I've been doing it all wrong. I've been using it to toast marshmallows. Ultimately, all you want from a jetpack is thrust. You want lots of stuff coming out the back to send you in the opposite direction. So basically, you're saying anyone who eats a vindaloo can fly. If you want your own jetpack, the main problem is the fuel to weight ratio. If you want to stay in the air for longer, you need some more fuel. But the problem is, the more fuel you carry, the less time you can spend in the air. It's a vicious cycle and you'll never get it right. But if you're the type of urban commuter who laughs in the face of danger and still wants to build one all on your own, our guide to the modern jetpack may be of interest to you. Most modern jetpacks run on hydrogen peroxide, a chemical found in various cleaners and even toothpastes, thanks to its ability to remove colourful stains. When this very reactive chemical is combined with super cold liquid nitrogen under pressure and just a hint of silver, you'd better hold on to your hat. The main product of the reaction is water and a huge amount of heat, which makes, you guessed it, steam, which is ejected from twin rocket nozzles at dizzying speeds. What you end up with is an 800 horsepower engine, 
about the same as the most powerful Ferraris, all in a backpack. Let's face it, the only way you're going is up, until your fuel runs out, that is. There's absolutely no way I'm going to call someone who is actually flying a failure. A high-flying turbo hack! Hit! If you find your daily trudge through the urban high street blighted by the weather, why not try slalom down it like this lot? Luckily for these extreme urban commuters, there was no traffic about. This is indeed a risky way to travel down a high street. I can't help but think, though, they were expecting a bit more of a reaction from the general public, who seem to be acting like this happens all the time. Unlike San Moritz, this après ski activity in the city probably doesn't have a lift to take you back to the top. This ice core extreme hack will make the most of the wintry urban sprawl until it makes a meal out of you. A high risk miss. Coming up at Hack HQ, Mike will be showing us how to become a real life urban safe hacker. And yes, it involves dangerous chemicals. So far, we've shown you how to get out of the jam like Superman and urban running training with uh, trains. But stay tuned as we show you a weather hack to help urban parents beat the rain and an urban use for a carrier bag that will drive you potty. The urban roads are the natural habitat of the urban entourage, but this group have just run into something that will stop them in their tracks. The speed bump. With their uh, generous figures, there's no way this lot are getting over it. Luckily, though, they found an easy solution to avoid this particular hazard. Just get out and walk. The speed bump, the ultimate enemy of the cool entourage. To be fair, slowing things down is kind of their job, and this one is doing it admirably. This hack may lose you some street cred, but you'll earn a reputation for driving the safest car on the streets. A sensible hack hit! If you, like everyone else on the planet, find public toilets a bit grubby, this germ-busting plastic bag hack will mean you need never fear being caught short when you're out again. Finally, a reason to have those 700 carrier bags in your kitchen drawer. Could you not have flushed the toilet before you started filming down it? For once, I agree with George. The chance of you catching any sort of disease from a public toilet seat is pretty much zero. Most of the bacteria will die because of the cold, and those transmitted to your skin are unlikely to be able to get into your body. So in reality, you're fine. Cutting up plastic bags and putting them on toilet seats is just weird. This one, hopefully unlike your visit to the toilet, is a miss. No urban landscape can be complete without a touch of graffiti. But take it from me, creativity can be exhausting. So this next hack uses a giant digital printer to take the elbow grease out of painting to create a mural of the most famous genies of all time. No, not George, Albert Einstein. I think if you are going to do graffiti on the side of your house, it's good to think about property value. So what I've done is on the side of my house, I've had a great big mural graffiti uh, picture of uh, a better house. So you've got a computer that has that image, which it then translates into electronic signals, which it sends wirelessly up onto that device on the wall, which kind of moves across and slowly down, row after row after row, and it tells that device when and when not to spray as it makes its way across the wall. And hey presto. But for those of us who aren't tech gods, these urban masterpieces still rely on the humble spray can. The two key ingredients of any spray can are the paint, obviously, and the propellant. This is usually a gas that is squashed into the can with so much pressure that it turns from a gas into a liquid. Thanks to this high pressure, your liquid propellant is desperate to escape and will happily take your paint with it if they're well mixed, and that's why you have to shake the can. All you need now is a valve, which is essentially a spring and a tube with a hole in it. This spring keeps it closed, but as soon as you push it down, it lets the compressed mix rapidly escape through the hole in the valve into the air. The propellant turns back into a gas and your paint is shot out as a fine mist. 
This great graffiti tip takes the arm work out of urban artistry with the touch of a button. A high-rise hack hit. Time to head to Hack HQ, where Mike is showing that all you need is a bit of urban chemistry to make sure nothing is safe, not even safes, in the big bad city. So, Mike, you're meant to be showing me an urban survival hack. We couldn't be further away from a city, mate. No, we're not, right? So, it's less of an urban survival hack, but right. more of a security hack. Oh, well, it's a good job it's on the urban hack show, then, isn't it, Mike? We've all heard of, you know, break-ins. Have you ever been broken into? Luckily, no. No? Good, good. But have you got a safe? I do not you have don't. a safe. No, nobody except banks and hotel rooms have safes, Mike. So how do you keep your valuables safe? <laughs> Trusty back pocket. <laughs> and that's why you're the guinea pig, Marcus. Right, so we all think that safes are safe, but not from me. Do you, do you have any, uh, you know, loose change? All right, I've fallen for that one before, mate. <laughs> Let's give you some of my shekels, shall we? Big time player in the house. Right, I'm going to put your coffers in the safe. Cool. Locked. Won't need them. What are you doing? <laughs> Look, with a bit of chemistry and thermite, yeah. I can open that safe again without the key. Well, I want my coppers back, so let's go. <laughs> let's go, right, OK. We need to weigh out right. the chemical ingredients. We've got iron oxide there, rust. Rust. Just rust, general hey. rust. And then we've got aluminium powder. All right, aluminium. Yeah? And then we've got another grade of aluminium powder to help it ignite. For anyone who doesn't know, Mike, that means setting something on fire again. So are these quite safe separately, then? Completely safe separately. I mean, that's rust, nothing. Aluminium powder, not a lot. It produces a few sparks. But mixed together, it makes thermite, and it is really difficult to set off thermite, which is why I've put this other aluminium powder in, which helps it get going. OK. Gonna be honest, yep. it looks just like rust. It still. does look just like rust. So just to clarify, what is thermite, then? Right. So thermite is basically an oxidizer, a fuel. You burn it. It produces lots of heat, lots of light, lots of sparks, and molten iron. Molten Pure iron. iron. Yeah. So how hot are we talking then? About two and a half thousand degrees. Hot. Very. Very hot. hot. It's going to be really bright. Okay. So well, let's put these to the side. Let's grab that one and that one. And I'll show you some of this thermite. Okay. Cool. Right. Pour it all into there. All right. And you have a little pot of sand underneath the thermite. Yeah, so the sand is to actually catch the molten iron mm -hmm. as it's uh, pouring out. At the bottom of this flower pot, I've got a tiny bit of aluminium foil. Now, that's just to stop the iron from pouring out, first of all. Okay. So it has to melt through the aluminium before it can pour down into the, uh, into the other little flower pot. OK. OK, right, put your safety glasses on. Right. Yeah, cos a bit of see-through plastic will help you against 2,500 degrees of molten iron. Now, to ignite it, I use a simple sparkler. OK. Yeah, that's going to be my fuse. So that burns hot enough, cos obviously it does already have iron in it. Right. Right. Let's light her up. There you go, pretty okay. sparkler. Oh. Yeah. So now it's getting down there. It's going to ignite the thermite right now. There we go. Okay. See how bright that is. Very bright. Yeah, really bright. Right, the sparkler's bounced out. There wow. we go. So that's molten... That's molten iron that's Come pouring on. out down there. That is very bright. It's really bright, yeah. Whew. Look at that. I mean, that is intensely bright, isn't it? That very, molten very light. Bright. Yeah, we got that, thanks, lads. It's bright. Right. Okay. And then if you come in here quickly right. and have a look, we've actually got... It's really, That's really, really bright, bright, isn't it? Yeah. We've actually got a lump of iron. And there's... Ooh. there's. It's all right. Yeah, there. right. That's just a little bit of it still. There you go. A lump of pure iron. And that is red go. hot. Red hot. Literally. Pure iron. It's still very squidgy, so... Uh... Ooh. Ooh. And some molten stuff. Burning the table. It's all right, we're insured, I think. Actually, can someone check? Are we insured? All right, wicked. So you've done some damage to some flower pots. Yeah. Uh, how about the safe? Right, so we're going to scale up this. We're going to use more thermite. It's going to melt straight through this safe, hopefully not through your coins. I wouldn't count on that, Marcus. So let's go outside where it's a bit more safe, unless you're a safe. Right, Mike, can I get my money back now, please? OK. Glasses down. Uh, uh, yeah. Light up the thermite. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Leg it. Smoking. There we go. All right, here See we a go. few more sparks. All right. There we go. There hey, we go. Hey, oh. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Right it's gone it. right through the safe. The safe is on fire. And so is your money. 
Yeah, the question is, has it burnt through the lock enough to open it? There's only one way to find out. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, go on. I mean, it's on fire, isn't it? It's and... like inside <laughs> and out. Whoa. Hey! There's right. definitely a... Uh... It sounds like it's still... <laughs> it's still <laughs> reacting in there. There's a lot of burning stuff there. Let me, uh... Can we get in that? <laughs> there we go! <laughs> Everyone at home, please don't open burning metal doors with your bare hands. So, um, Look at all that molten iron on top of your coins. So, uh, I'm not getting my money back then. I don't though. think so. Sorry about that. Uh, whoa. I opened it, though. Yeah, yeah. I opened it. But fear not, viewers, because we'll be back at Hack HQ later to see Mike taking urban security to a whole new level by showing us how to city-proof our most treasured possessions. <laughs> what's, going, what's going on here? <laughs> what's this? So far, we've seen a ludicrous way to stay hygienic in urban toilets, a wacky workout for keep fit commuters, and a mic approved way to break into a safe. Still to come, we've got a cooling way to ride to work without the effort, and a musical method of clearing annoying pedestrians out of bike lanes. Unfortunately, no hack has been discovered yet to stop it raining. So here's a nifty solution to beating wet weather during that next jaunt through the city streets. If it's raining and you only have one umbrella, the good dad gives the umbrella to his daughter. But the smart dad uses his daughter as the umbrella. <laughs> This unique urban rain repellent tip is a perfect example of wet weather practicality, doubling up the children's entertainment. A pro parent hack hit! Cyclists versus pedestrians. As long as cities have existed, so too has this conflict. But this cheerful cyclist has found a way to clear the bike lane by singing any trespassers out of the way. Bike lane, bike lane. I know my voice isn't perfect, but at least people move away. Bike lane, bike lane, you're in the bike lane. It's a great song. It should be number one. Lane, I don't think that version should you're be. You're in the bike lane. Thank you. It's a bit lame, really, singing people out of the way. I think. You need a bit, something with a bit more power, a bit more kind of oomph behind it. I've got one of these, and I just go up behind people going... <laughs> and then they move. But if you do want to avoid being arrested for impersonating a police officer, then this vocal cycle stunt is a sound way to make your city commute less chore and more chime. A harmonic hack hit! You won't need to make up any songs to speed up your journey around the metropolis with this next propeller-powered cycle clip. The added bonus is that with a huge fan strap to your bike, you'll also avoid picking up a sweat by the time you arrive at the office. As a keen cyclist, when I first see this, I just think, oh, people are getting so lazy. But it does work, and he actually manages to get up some pretty good speed on it. This bike can travel up to 80 kilometres an hour, but I'm not sure that I'd want to be riding it. It's already quite terrifying cycling in any big city, uh, so adding a propeller on your back is just going to be asking for trouble. Propeller on your back? Cool. Propeller spinning you uncontrollably into a four-ton articulated lorry? Not so cool. A recipe for disaster and a miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig, Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier, we learned an amazing urban hack when Mike, with just a few chemical combos, turned a structurally sound solid steel safe into a molten mess in seconds. Now Mike has turned his attention to every Urbanite's essential accessory, the car. And he's got a few tricks to keep you and your car safe on the city streets. Eat your heart out, Batman. Cool. That's great, but uh, how am I going to get my money back? <laughs> OK, well, I've got some loose change in my car, if you can get into it. <laughs> right. Why do I get the feeling this will not be as simple as it sounds? All right, so this is the car that has got my cash in it then, yeah? Yep, right. this is the car. Uh, who's your mate? That's Max, yeah, don't worry about him, he'll come into it later. All right, OK. So, 
We've got a car, it's kitted out with a few things to stop you from getting in it. But if you can, the offer's still open, you go for it. Get your money, it's right there. All right, mate. <laughs> what is that? That there is 80,000 volts of electricity. It's made from just two AA batteries with a flyback transformer stepping it all the way up to 80,000 volts. This confirms it. Mike is, in fact, mad. <laughs> 80,000 volts. Yeah. How much electricity is that? Right, it's a lot. If you think your, your socket at home, that's 240 volts. It's a massive amount more. Right, no one's getting in that no car. No one is getting out of it. Not unless they fancy eating their food through a straw for the rest of their lives. I'm impressed. <laughs> but wait, we've got a lot of other things. Have you noticed the little buttons on the dash there? Yeah, it looks yeah. a little bit James Bond. -y. It does yeah. a bit, yeah. Yes, if James Bond drove a five-door family saloon. That's when Max comes in. So that was electricity. All right. I've rigged this car all the way around, so no hijackers are getting in here. Where's Mike been driving that he's scared of hijackers? So what's next for me, then? Try the boot. <laughs> All right. All right, it's not going to fry me this time. All right, doddle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what's, going, what's going on here? What's this? <laughs> smoke grenades. Everyone needs smoke grenades to stop hijackers getting in, right? No, not really, Mike. Just cartoon characters. Yep, and you know what? It's done the job. <laughs> look, at, look at the amount of smoke coming out of that. That is a lot of smoke. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely oh. put me and anyone else off this car and breaking into it. What else have we got for me? And what's Max doing here? I have got one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Electric shock, oh. smoke. There's only one thing missing from this urban car now, and I think it may be Mike's favourite thing. So the next one, you can't get into the car, you can't go anywhere near it. It's a bit more dangerous. That's why we've got Max here. So if I position right. you just over there, I'm going to hop into the driver's seat. Good there? Uh, as good as I'll be, mate. Good to go. You ready? Ready. Here you go. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we never saw that one coming. I think he's caught. Yeah, just a little bit. That's an epic hack, mate. <laughs> You've earned your cash. Keep my change. Uh, Same about Max, though. I think I'd better put him out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that could have been you. Oh, uh, yeah, rather him than me. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Max. How did you do that? So, inside the boot, I had propane tanks. They had tubes leading to flame bars on the outside. All I had to do was press two buttons. Max was toast. Definitely did the job. So we've had electricity, yep. we've had smoke, and we've had fire. Yeah, and you didn't even get to see the ejector seat. Are you joking? No, I never joke about my work. That wraps it up for our journey through the urban jungle. Now you're fully loaded with hacks to help you stand out in the big city. And probably just a little more terrified of Mike. See you next time.